Olá, bom dia. Carl Munson here with the Good Morning Portugal live stream, YouTube channel and podcast. Crikey, sorry, nearly overslept today and uh, nearly late. Well, I was a little bit late for the screen there, so sorry to hold you up. I hope you're well. Tudo bem? Um, let's uh, see what we can do to keep improving and speaking Portuguese here. I do have a Portuguese word of the day for you, the palavra do dia. Uh, anyone know what wind is in Portuguese? Um, so I'll, I'll be mixing up. Sometimes I'll give you the Portuguese word. Sometimes I'll give you the English word for you to translate. So, yeah, please, can you... Um, Let me know what the word is for wind in Portuguese. A little bit of research might help you. Uh, as you can see, we are talking bread and wine today. And I should have actually said bread, wine and mushrooms because I've had some great news in from our friends at Shimajita. Do you remember Fungi Fridays uh, here on the Good Morning Portugal live stream? If you're an old timer uh, in this community, you may well remember Fungi Fridays and some lovely news from Shimajito, albeit um specifically only if you're living in Fundal or Porto I believe soon is going to be uh, their next patch for home delivery would you like to receive mushrooms in your house um, which sounds that's interesting is it? it sounds a bit like um you know they might su suddenly start growing in your house but this is a delivery service uh, they are delivering to 50 people they've opened the first 50 subscriptions um, at the special price of 16.90 euros monthly. Um, so you'll get a weekly delivery and it will cost you 16.90. And these are special, and these are no ordinary mushrooms, right? Subscribe now and receive 300 grams of organic, exotic, and fresh mushrooms every week for the year uh, from the local producer directly to your table. I love this company. I love what they're doing. And as part of your subscription there, you will get uh, recipes, news, and tips. And the first 50 will, free of charge, get a classroom course on mushroom produ production in pots. Any one of you growing mushrooms or experience of growing mushrooms, I have some, um, what are they called, inoculated pegs in our salad box. They're no good there. Um, and we are sort of hesitant about um, planting them and using them because my, my experience of growing mushrooms has not been good. So please swap your tips about growing mushrooms in the Happy Homesteaders group, which is our Facebook group. Uh, happy homesteaders and this uh, this system here of subscription is available i believe i just signed up straight away because i love exotic mushrooms you know i love any mushrooms but these they grow some beauties at shimajito and i subscribe via paypal only to discover they don't deliver to me yet but i believe they're working on it and of course they should be using the portuguese postal system right um mushrooms are nice and light to send it's not like sending water is it or heavier things so uh, i'm looking forward to them uh, making the stretch to Anadia, to the Aveiro district. But currently, you're looking at Fundal and soon Porto, I believe, for mushroom, home mushroom delivery from shimajito.com. Uh, before I go to the weather, let's have some uh, weather reports from where you are. Hola, bon dia, from a grey but muggy Southampton. So you too, huh? A uh, bit muggy here too. I'm looking at the weather probe for outside the studio, already 25 and a half. Um, and it, um, we're still in the Vindima um, times in September. Very windy night. Um, that's why I've chosen the palavra do dia to be wind or let's go for windy as well. What's windy in Portuguese? <laughs> that, could come, that could come up with some interesting results and findings when you um, look, look that up on Google or maybe you know it already. Uh, Eugene McCrossan, good morning to you. Hola, bon dia, Carl. Good morning to you, Eugene, as well. Uh, thank you for your greeting, Paul Williams, too. And from Germany, Jim McDonald's in early with a guten Morgen from a sunny Wiesbaden, Deutschland. Um, good morning, indeed. Absolutely. To you, Jim. Who else is tuned in this morning? How are you doing? Um, are you still recovering from the weekend? I, I feel a bit like that, I must say, but I'm still looking forward to Thursday's uh, Wine Club. Good morning, Portugal Wine Club, where we'll be looking at this beauty. Not just looking at it, drinking it as well. Cabrish. Tell you a bit more about that uh, in a while, but that's our selection for this week. Have you tried this? Beautiful looking bottle of wine, I believe, produced in the Caragal de Chol, um, part of Portugal. Morning from a breezy Castanero de Pera from Pete this morning. I've grown mushrooms from a few box kits. And I went, oh, so okay, you've got the green thumb, as Americans say. Uh, almost the season for the wild ones too. Yummy. Um, Pete, are you doing mushroom tours this year? Uh, I know you sent me some beautiful photographs uh, last year. 
or earlier this year. Can't remember when we were doing Fungi Friday. It must have been this year. What am I talking about? We haven't even been broadcasting for a year yet. So, yeah, earlier this year, you sent us some pictures of uh, some beautiful mushrooms from your forages. Are you doing those? And are they open to the public? Let, do let us know, mate. Uh, Eloise is here. Hola, amigos. I'm hiding from the sun in the living room here in Panella, looking forward to a beautiful day. Isn't it great hiding from the sun just after nine o'clock in the morning? And I've got to get this right. Go, you know, I am the only estrangero foreigner on the streets of Anadia when I go out. I take my kids out as well. Some people must think it's cruel where I drag the kids out in the sun. I mean, you know, hats and protection and so on. But um, you under begin to understand why, don't you? People get up early here and then, you know, go inside when the sun becomes intense and then come back out later. Having said that, coming out later is still not much good because it's so hot uh, and um, the sun lasts for so long. And, and I never thought I would be complaining about good weather. But there you go. That's, that's the human condition for you. Uh, thanks for saying hi, Eloise. And uh, yeah, I, I don't know what if you've adapted to life with the sun. That's not a bad little talking point this morning, actually, adapting to life with the sun. We be began talking about the sesta, didn't we, last week? And that's obviously part of it is having a kip in the afternoon. It's a good way of avoiding the sun, good way of avoiding everything, basically. But uh, how do you adjust to the sun? Have you got yourself a nice hat? Do you bother with sunscreen? Actually, while I'm talking about sunscreen, good shout, Gary Austin, last night, wear sunscreen. Uh, that wonderful track uh, accredited uh, to um, Baz Luhrmann of course, and we played that on the Portugal playlist. Thank you to everyone who joined me for the radio show. Old school radio show, folks, on a Monday night at 10 o'clock, and we played some great tunes. Let me just go to the playlist to tell you uh, the Portuguese artists you can still find out about. If you go to our, um, our podcast um, facility, basically, um, on, on I don't know if it does show up on Spotify, to be fair, but um, I'll, I'll put the link in in just a moment to our where you can find all the podcasts, but also more excitingly, or as excitingly, uh, we also uh, publish the or, or the listen again of the Good Evening Portugal radio show that is known as the Portugal Playlist. Last night, then, you would have discovered music from uh, Portuguese players such as Zeca Afonso, uh, Zutosh e Pontapas, uh, Tony Carrera, thanks to Neil for that uh, recommendation, and Alcino Frazão um last night so there you go that's that's what you would have discovered if you tuned in but it's not too late you can uh go I'll, I'll find the um the link and pop it in the comments for you um because uh, all the podcasts are there and these radio shows for listening again uh basically what we do is we ask you to share your music that is part of your portuguese adventure whether it be the planning bit the road trip bit or the music you've come to love that is Portuguese that you now listen to, that you never in a million years thought you would know names of, of Portuguese artists like the ones I just mentioned. So I will um, give you that link as soon as I can find it. Wine and bread, of course, today. We've done the mushrooms bit, but we should go to the weather, really, shouldn't we, first of all? Um, I'm still trying to be a bit cheeky here and find you my uh, podcast listing. Uh, I, I will do that. I'll find that for you. But let's have a quick look at the weather. And um, I'm guessing we're getting the beautiful uh, summer turning to autumn, end of summer here all over Portugal. Let me know how it is for you, if you will. And thank you to those of you who've already done that. And we will look at the principal parts of Portugal for the weather and special requests for any other part of um, for Portugal as well. If you've got a more, if you live in a more obscure area and you want to share what the weather's like there, I'll do that for you. And you can do it for yourself in the comments, of course. Um, and um, my a computer's a bit slow to load up today, often like their owners, aren't they? Uh, 22 degrees in Lisbon currently and clear. So I don't know if it's windy in Lisbon as well. Certainly windy here overnight. Jimmy Chu, the puppy, was a little bit unsettled by it. I didn't know what to do. He, he was um, he escaped his compound. I made him a luxury compound because that's how you do it here in Portugal, right? Um, and he, he's escaped from four such places now. Uh, and he was whimpering outside the door, so I let him in. And uh, then he's whimpering because he was inside and the wind's blowing outside. And old Peggy, she she was good as gold. But um, in the end, uh, they I think they stayed out on the balcony uh, last night uh, in the wind. So little Jimmy Choo's had to get used to that. And um, uh, yes, uh, uh, it's a funny thing, isn't it? It must be really, I mean, it's, it's quite spooky when you're a human being. Don't forget that's our palavra de dia, our word of the day. What is wind in Portugal? What is windy even in Portugal? But can you imagine for a dog, if they do have a, a highly... Well, they, we know they have a highly attuned sense of hearing. 
when it's blowing a gale, it's scary enough for us humans. It must be really scary for dogs. Uh, 22 degrees in Lisbon, then rising to 32. 28 tomorrow, 31 on Thursday, and then it gets a bit cloudy again. And look, some, some rain coming in at the weekend in Lisbon. Porto, 20 degrees, uh, rising to 30. A little bit cloudy in Porto. Uh, Coimbra, 20, currently rising to a whopping 34. It's going to be a bit cloudy, though, so that'll be good uh, when I drag, drag the kids out in the sun later. Uh, and um, there will be a bit of cloud cover for us. I had to wear my uh, wife's floppy hat yesterday to shade my bonds from the sun. And people did give me a bit of a wide berth. It's a pretty hat, and probably not uh, for a you know middle-aged bloke especially and i was wearing it mexican style as well you know a, a, like a <laughs> like from a cowboy movie it's got a string on it so i had it on my back whilst in the pinga dos uh, and they still might be looking at the cctv of that trying to figure out what's going on with this guy uh, 22 degrees in faro at the moment rising to 26 today but a couple of cloudy days down there too so wind and cloud i think possibly all over Portugal. Um, I feel obliged to uh, let you know as well, very significant rise uh, in risk of wildfires published by Portugal News yesterday. The National Emergency and Civil Protection Authority, uh, ANEPC, has warned of a very significant, in inverted commas, rise in the risk of wildfires until tomorrow across the whole of mainland Portugal. So be on the alert for that. Of course, it's the wind, isn't it? aggravating that risk, according to the authority, is a persistent hot and dry weather. We know about that, but coupled with an easterly wind. Tell me, you meteorologist, an easterly wind, is that one that blows to the east or comes from the east? Okay, um, let me just uh, have a little sip of my tea here. Excuse me. Oh, that's better. Um, yeah, so good morning to you, Gary, and thanks for that. Uh, what, yeah, that's, that's how I went off on that riff, wasn't it? Your recommendation of Baz Luhrmann's sunscreen. Hope you enjoyed that last night. If you're talking about bread and wine, don't forget the Sopa de Cavallo Cansado, which we spoke of before. Um, we did, Pete. Well, you have to re remind me what that was. Um, is that tired, tired horse soup? It is, isn't it? Uh, there will be some mushroom walks again this year, but probably not until November, December, after a few re weeks of rain and cool weather. We'll keep you all informed. Come on, guys. What is Portuguese for wind here? I need to know. Um, thank you for that, Pete, that uh, announcement. So look forward to Pete's uh, mushroom walks again towards the end of the year. I'll keep anywhere, says Eloise. Probably after a couple of glasses of this sort of thing as well. It makes it a lot easier, doesn't it? Uh, after the research, um, we'll call it research. Up early this morning, painting the Adega next to the gas bar. Rock the gas bar. That's what we should have played for you last night. Rock the gas bar. <laughs> that is um, Gary's man cave come bar, which you should see the photos. I think they're up in the happy homesteaders. Uh, legendary um, place, uh, the old watering hole of his home that he's inherited and now can't change. It's protected by folklore, if not actual law. And I'm hoping there'll be a, a network of such places to visit right across. I mean, wouldn't that make a brilliant coffee table book? The man cave gas bar type bars in people's cellars that have been created. And it's a matter of personal pride, I think, for a lot of Portuguese gentlemen to have such a thing and a tradition. I'm glad to see that it's being taken up by um, expats as well. Expats, immigrants or um, and what did I see? You know, the, the, this ongoing debate, are we expats? Are we immigrants? Um, I, th I, th I saw somebody talking about economic colonialist. That's a bit harsh. Uh, Ola bon dia, a bit concerned. Local pack of dogs, six in total. They've been around the house. No sign of mum or kittens. Oh, dear. Uh, let us know what happens there then, Owen. I am outside waiting to see if they reappear. I think they probably will. Um, cat mothers... Mother cats are a special, special breed. Um, they're amazing, aren't they? With their, you know, we worry about them so much, yet they are um, absolutely amazing um, at looking after their young. And they know, they probably knew of the on, on looming pack of dogs. <laughs> it's interesting to see those, isn't it? Um, it's all, you could almost make a children's cartoon series with some of the packs of dogs you see in Portugal, you know, with a sort of big alpha male leader and his right hand man or woman, little sort of Jack Russell thing. That, <laughs> and you see him walking about, checking out the bins, walking around town, strutting around the place. Um, yes, the, the, the dog characters of Portugal. And of course, here we have two um, 
cat mums that we're looking out for, right? Um, how's yours, Gary? And keep us informed, Owen, if you will. And Owen's come up with Ventoso, Windy. And we all suffer from this from time to time, of course. Uh, Ventoso is the word, uh, the adjective windy. Uh, and Vento would be, let me just put that on the screen then. So today's word of the day, palavra de dia, Vento for wind. Very good top marks to you, Owen, for solving that. Yeah, and um, to Joe as well, Vento. Uh, for wind uh, and here we go uh, yes uh, tired horse soup I forget though Pete what was in that what would you feed a tired horse um, I know ginger is used literally to um, ginger up a horse in the horse racing business I won't tell you exactly how they administer that uh, morning again Alice is becoming a regular it's becoming a habit analyst great to see you and thank you for solving that mystery yes tired horse soup uh, Jim McDonald answering the meteorological question an easterly wind comes from the east. 28 years as a weather forecaster with the U.S. Air Force. We need you, Jim, um, to, to, to do the weather. You could be the weather guy for Good Morning Portugal. Awesome. Uh, vento, wind. Yes, everybody's is coming in with that now. Vento is Portuguese for wind, of course. And I wonder if dead horse soup gives you wind. It's, it's a top suspect in that business, right? Wind directions are where they come from, i.e. a north wind comes from the north. Uh, the Nortado wind of Portugal comes from the north. Vento wind, Ventos are windy. Very good, everybody. I only, I only needed to ask twice, and there you are, um, showing off your Portuguese language skills. Very good. The Palavra do Dia, word of the day, will continue with a compendium of such on my blog, uh, coffee.com, k uh, o fi dot com forward slash Carl Munson, and I'll put the link in for that a bit later on as well. So I wonder if I can tell you a bit more about bread. Uh, a controversial subject. This is, do you remember James Cave, the Portugalist? Well, we're looking at his resource for bread. And I know this is long overdue, um, Gary. You wanted to know about bread. And I think this will ask as many questions. This is no slur on the character or writing of James Cave. But I think this is a complex subject to write about. And I also think it will run and run because it's one of those things. Look, Torada there. The first thing I, I note of some controversy or of a controversial nature is I can't see Paul Davo in this list. You will see many here as we work our way through them. So I'm going to take a breath, take a sip of coffee. We'll come back to Cabrige wine. I'm going to talk about your favorite breads now. All right. So just excuse me for one moment. Lovely uh, English breakfast tea sponsored by Lidl there. So, yeah, tell us what, tell me what your favorite Portuguese breads are and what, uh, as James is saying here, 14 Portuguese breads to look out for in Portugal. And um, have we missed anything? I, I think Paulo Davo is missing from this list. We'll find out in just a moment. But he says, as with most European countries, bread is an integral part of the Portuguese diet. The day usually starts with a bread roll or toast, torada. A personal favorite, I have to say. It's not just toast, though. It's different. <laughs> it's, it is for me anyway. The bread is usually included, or bread is usually included at each major meal and often for the snacks in between meals as well. So if you're avoiding carbs, it's a tricky one, right? Uh, the Portuguese love their own breads, but foreigners rarely fall in love with Portuguese breads in quite the same way. Well, speak for yourself, James. I am head over heels in love with Portuguese bread, and I know my best cafes and bakeries to go buy the bread. And that's what I like as well, actually. When, when you go in for a coffee or, you know, a bit of lunch, panada de frango or something like that, a bit of a snack, uh, sumo orange natural, faz favor. Um, when you're paying, you can pick up some bread at the same time. I love that tradition. A lot of Portuguese bread is also designed to be eaten the same day. Yes, bread should be eaten on the same day, right? What is this? I mean, Jim McDonald in Germany will probably be saying, you know, with the dark bread, with the rye bread, you can eat that all week long. Um, I find it really sour. And I'm thinking, yeah, if that bread, if that bread is like, you know, the equivalent of a cockroach in a nuclear holocaust, you know, th then you don't you, you don't want to be eating something that's going to last throughout, a, a, you know, the nuclear Armageddon, do you? Some of it within a couple of hours of being made, even in Portugal, you should eat it. And that can be frustrating to those of us who are used to longer life bread. I ask questions of long life bread, folks. What What's in it that makes it last a long time? Portugal has some great breads, though, and it's worth trying a few different types until you find one that you like. Although there are some breads that are available throughout the whole of Portugal, breads are often regional. Ex and, and this is good as well, isn't it? This is a good thing. It's good to try the different breads when you travel throughout Portugal. But be aware, 
you may not be able to easily get that bread everywhere in Portugal. Oh, I see. So if you fall in love, for example, with Pão and uh, Alentejano, and tel- let me try that again. Pão Alentejano, there we go, um, or Pão de Cabeça, this, then you might not be able to buy it elsewhere. However, I think um, some of the supermarkets have got it covered. However, you, you I guess, again, you know, it's going to have preservatives in it and it might be their interpretation. So, you know, local vernacular breads, best eaten where they're, where they're made, right, and the region they come from. Um, so another good reason to tour Portugal. So this uh, Pau Alentejano is a popular regional bread from the Alentejan Alentejo region, of course, of Portugal. You'd have guessed that, made from wheat flour and baked in a wood oven. And it's famous for its head or forehead that sits on top of the loaf. It so is. It's a funny looking thing. Uh, the butt of many a joke in my household, I have to say. Um, yeah, uh, and then it's called a head or a forehead. Pau Alentejano is also used as an ingredient in local Alentejo cooking, particularly in Portuguese dishes like migash. And um, see, to me, migash isn't a bread-based dumpling, although I guess it could be formed into it. Migash to me is the um, breadcrumb and caldo verde mix uh, that you might have as, as a veg side with, with your mixed grill, for example. Or a sorda, the bread-based soup which was a shock to me, I have to tell you, the first time I came to Portugal and had that. I, sort of, I do believe that to be one of the um, acquired tastes, if I, may be, if I may put it respectfully like that. Okay, let's move on to the cornbread. And I think this is going to have to be a part one and part two. There's 14 breads to look at here, and we need to cover your comments about it. Of course, for your vocabulary, pão um, is what uh, you need to know. You probably know that already, right? Pão quiente, hot bread. Uh, P-A with a little squiggly bit on, which I'm sure isn't the, the right way to refer to that. P-A with a squiggly bit O, pão. Um, and I know that can get you into trouble as well with the pronunciation of that because it, there is a double meaning there. But anyway, let's move on. Brau de milho, cornbread. Uh, the Americans must like this, I, su- I suspect, because they're used to cornbread in the States, right? Brau de milho or pão de milho is a cornbread that comes from northern Portugal and it can also be found in Galicia and parts of Brazil. It's a, can you hear the neighbor's dog? That's a very Portuguese sound. And it can be also found in Galicia and parts of Brazil. It's a great accompaniment to soups like caldo verde or simply with butter, cheese, or Portuguese cold meats. Yes, I think for me, um, the cornbread is good with cheese. Not something I would want to toast particularly or eat that often, I have to say, but lovely when it comes in a basket like that, right? And uh, you're drinking some wine and you can have it with cheese. Uh, fairy liquid commercial. <laughs> we'll scroll past that. We've got to make a living, James. Um, if you've never had it before, Brau de Milho is a little like Irish soda bread. Yeah, fair comment. It's definitely one of the best, if not the best, Portuguese breads out there. Wow. Uh, and so it's worth keeping an eye out for it in the supermarket or at your local padaria. So there you go. More vocabulary for you. Padaria is a bakery. Uh, like Pau Alentejano. Brau de Milho is also used in some Portuguese dishes. For example, bacalao con broa, which you might expect, which is bacalao topped with crumpled, crumbled, crumbled broa bread. Um, one of the, I think there's a bacalao recipe for every day of the year, right? At least. So there you go. Bacalao con broa is what you do. If you buy a cornbread loaf and you've got some leftovers, why not try that? Uh, bolo de cacao. A cacao. Bolo de caco uh, is a type of, <laughs> look forward to your pronunciation tips, Ana Lucia, in the comments. This one, I think, I've seen with burgers, right? And it's like a pie clit or um, sort of a muffin shape, this one. Not a muffin cake, but a bread muffin, um, if that makes sense. It's kind of crumpety shaped. Um, and I, I knew this would happen. We would get into bread politics here and different interpretations of what those words mean. But let's keep going. Uh, bolo de coco is a type of bread that comes from the island of Madeira. But you, I want to look into Madeira cake as well. Is Madeira cake from Madeira? Or is it something that happened, you know, lost in translation in England? But you can occasionally find it in other parts of Portugal as well. The bread is incredibly soft, which is unusual for Portuguese bread and very easy to eat. You see, again, I, I think that we are we are really wading into the controversy now. I, I think a lot of Portuguese bread is soft. It's certainly easy to eat. Um, bolo de caco is made from flour and sweet potato. Ah, oh, okay, that's where the sweetness comes from, which is probably due to the lack of cereals on Madeira. Isn't that fantastic? Needs must, 
necessity is the mother of invention so they make bread with sweet potatoes or sweet potato flour i suspect the bread is named after the cocoa or hot stone that it's cooked on marvelous traditionally it's served with garlic butter but it's also used for making sandwiches as well yeah it's a good sandwich uh, shape that and good for putting a burger into typical fillings are ham cheese Look, come on, the Portuguese will put ham and cheese into anything, to be fair, misto, or both, but you can also get fillings like carne en vinho, alho, what's that? That's meat with wine and garlic, right? Presunto, steak, or sausages. Right, I'm going to leave it at Torada for today um, because I think Torada is not a bread. I think t- Torada is a recipe almost. I know toast is not really a recipe, but, you know, it's a treatment of the essential ingredient, right? Torada, for me, is just one of the wonderful discoveries of Portugal. And I really don't like it when people say it's only toast. It's not only toast. Although Portugal has some wonderful cakes and pastries, a lot of Portuguese people like to start their day with torada con manteiga, toast and butter. Loads of vocab today. Fantastic. This is especially, this is essentially a sliced bread that's buttered and cut into strips. See, and we'll show you the picture in just a moment. But the slice of bread is much thicker than sliced bread in other countries, at least two, if not three times as thick. And I tell you what, my mouth is watering now because I am anticipating, in my mind's eye, eating Tirada. Absolutely right, James. It is thicker. And look, this is what you end up with. But to me, that is not a traditional serving of Tirada. Um, Two or three times thicker than normal sliced bread. And I think, actually, technically speaking, the name for this type of bread in Portugal is Pau de Forma, formed bread, right? Um, you know, Mother's Pride. This is as close as you get, as, as well as that. Is it Bimbi? That I don't know about Bimbi. Portuguese people know about Bimbi. I don't. But there is a sliced loaf that they do for making, you know, toasted sandwiches and so on. And Pau de Forma, I believe, is what this is called, formed bread. You know, it'd be like, um, what do you call it in the UK? Split tin loaf, but a very boxy shape. And then look at it there. That should be stacked like Jenga blocks, right? Okay. So these are fingers of bread soaked in butter. And that is why my mouth is watering at the moment, because that to me is a fantastic breakfast. Probably if you have it every day, a certain way to get diabetes as well. Um, And not for you paleo keto types at all, but what a lovely breakfast. A medele and tarada like that, stacked like Jenga blocks, dripping with butter. And what I do, I don't know if you're like this, but I eat the crust bits first and I save the middle finger, so to speak, for last, which by that time is completely wilted. It's um, toastiness has given way to a moist butteriness. And the worst thing that can happen with um, Tarada is your kids come along and take that last bit that you're saving that is soaked in butter. And this is what they do. And Mrs. M used to do that as well, but she's not on. She's, she's more vegan now again, which is good news for me. Possibly. <laughs> I don't know about long term. This bread is also used to make fatias douradas and rab- rabanadas, which is the Portuguese equivalent of French toast. That is a perfect partner for that. This is sometimes served warm, but you'll also see it served cold and kept in the pastelaria counter next to all of the other cakes. So you could buy a cold French toast. Look at that. Caramelized beautifully, covered in sugar. Um, you know, I've mentioned diabetes once already. Go steady with this stuff. Um, so there you go. Sometimes serve warm, but you'll see it cold with the cakes. Fatias Doradas is often served as a dessert around Christmas time. Mouth still watering here. So I hope we've done it justice so far, and we'll come back to bread. And <laughs> the L word has turned up. No, and I'm not talking about love. I'm talking about little. I'm seeing some shock and shock horror emoticons. What have I said? What have I said already? And I'm, I'm winding back into the comments to see what's what's going on here. Um, Claire Bendel, good morning to you. Anyone know how to pronounce Figuera de Foge, please? I'm off there tomorrow to make another XBX video, but don't know how to pronounce the name. Tricky when you're at the uh, railway station. Oh, I got told off at a railway station. Here's a bit of intel for you. If you're booking a return train trip, so... As you, as you may well know by now, because I've been banging on about it so much, I was with the Portugal Good Morning Portugal Wine Club on Sunday night. The the elite squad, uh, the wine ninjas, met up in Portugal, in Coimbra. Sorry, of course, in Portugal, in Coimbra on Sunday night for a, t- a tasting at Acampanhesa. Acampanhesa, what a place! Um, must write a blog. So much to do, so little time. But anyway, um, you, you, you'll you get a sense of that in yesterday's blog, actually, and on yesterday's show. Um, and I, I went there by train. Uh, love using the train here. 
and um, thought, I, I know what I'll do, because I'll probably be hot-footing it back to the station. I'll get my ticket in advance. So I went and got my ticket. Um, Correa, first of all. Um, and then I was trying to piece together the Portuguese for, like, later. Este uh, comboio, mais tarde. Um, uh, what was it? Uh, 20, 20, 20, no, uh, yeah, 20 dois horas. And then she gave me a, a big telling off, right? So I asked for the Korea train, um, and she gave me the, the ticket for the next train. So you can't just buy an open ticket, as far as I'm aware. You might be able to, but I wouldn't know how to ask for that. But she proper told me off, like, you know, if you wanted the later train, you should have said the later train. So I had to get a ticket with the actual time on it. I mean, there's nobody on the train anyway. It's not as if it's going to be fully booked. But rules are rules, and I understand that. And obviously, I apologize and walk sheepishly away. But just so you know, if you are thinking of booking your return ticket on a train, make sure you specify the time of that return journey. Um, and I don't mind a, a, um, you know, a Portuguese telling off every now and then. It's educational. But Figueira de Foz is how I say it. Have I got that right, Portuguese folks tuned in? Uh, go with Figueira de Foz. Um, I imagine it's got a name like The Foz as well among Portuguese people. We will find out. Uh, Joe Johnson likes Bolo's cassette. Is, is that, is that um, a typo? Or is that actually a kind of Portuguese bread, the cassette bread, the famous cassette bread of Alvazara, maybe, or Espinhal? Uh, Bikos, uh, Forma Escura. This, this, she's talking like an expert here, isn't she? Bolo's cassette, Bikos. See, Bikos, I thought, was a kind of coffee as well. Forma, I'd get for sure. Cassetta, okay, it's cassetta bread. Uh, what, what is it though? Tell us more. A uh, forno davo is wonderful in Almafalo. So Joe obviously loves her bread. Um, so and and that's what I thought was missing from. We'll come back to James's list. Maybe we'll bread continued tomorrow because uh, you know, like he says, it's an in integral and important part of Portuguese life. So we must look at bread uh, and, as well as wine, as we often do. Uh, but forno davo is that the Alva grandma's bread baked in the oven? Sounds like it to me. Uh, actually. Jim McDonald in Germany says most of the breads go bad quickly here. Okay, and that's probably German purity laws, and because you're not eating the um, the rye bread wrapped in plastic, which to me is so unappetizing. And, and I know it's quite good for you know you, you people who want to avoid white bread and have a have a sort of dark rye bread, but the idea of bread wrapped in plastic on its journey from Germany or whatever just, just it doesn't light my culinary fire. Um, just as in most places in Europe, and people shop at their local bakery, which seem to be on every other corner daily. Okay, this is this is the way to buy bread, folks. Um, England did terrible things to bread. The Chorleywood process to make it prove quicker, nasty, you know, all for convenience and, and commerce. And then breads that last for three weeks, you know, a five if you toast it. That, you know, come on, stop it. Uh, bon dia, Carl. Thank you for that, Jim. Speaking of breads, Rachel and I love the power de cement at Gary's recommended little. <laughs> He's never going to live it down. Um, the L word that I mentioned before, little. Um, it's it, it's like Marmite. It divides people. However, you can't buy Marmite in little yet. Um, Lidl's breads are top quality. So it's the seed loaf that you're buying. I mean, the great, the good thing about little breads, of course, is even though they're made to a sort of factory formula that I, I suspect gets delivered through the back door, one of those juggernauts, and then is baked beautifully, um, scientifically almost. So it's very consistent, isn't it, Lidl's bread? And, the, you know, the wonderful thing is it is it's fresh baked there. So it's part baked, I suspect, in a factory somewhere else. And it's brought and finished off uh, in a few minutes, which generates the lovely aroma in the store. But, yeah, the, the seed bread is good. The seed bread is good. Must be a nightmare for those poor little staff, as well as having to wear masks all day long now. Can you imagine sweeping up all those seeds from the um, seedy bread there? The trials and tribulations. Maybe one day we will have somebody on the show who works at Lidl's. Um, that would be a real good insight. And I saw that P Paul, um, f formerly of Amigos and now Village Kitchen, p published a meme yesterday, um, which was <laughs> dark humour for sure. Um, but he was saying that moment when you stand next to an expat in Lidl, <laughs> and then it's like they're not used to it when a Portuguese person is taking their time, as they should, and as we should learn to as well, right? Um, you know, when it's your turn in the queue, you take your time. That's what you've got to look forward to. And you Brits, or whoever it is from the rest of Europe, Northern Europeans, you frugals, you efficient, 
you people who pride yourself on efficiency and rushing around, huffing and sighing and puffing in the queue, shut up. <laughs> Go back to where you came from. I don't believe I just said that. But in this context, I think it's justified um, that, you know, Calma, tranquilo, you came to Portugal for a quieter, easier life. Stop tutting and huffing in queues in cash points or Lidl. There, I've said it. Uh, mushroom bread here in al -Qaid. Very good, Adriel. Good morning to you. Tuned in. The man behind shimajito.com and the mushrooms. I've, I don't know if you were here at the beginning, Adriel, but I've mentioned your system for home delivery of uh, mushrooms, exotic mushrooms, 300 grams, 16.90. I think that's a bargain. And I'm hoping you're going to post some to me soon and, and have that um, have that service for the, us folks here in this part of Portugal in Anadia. And looking forward to seeing you so we can investigate the possibility of growing mushrooms as well. Adriel, thanks for tuning in this morning, uh, Mr. Shimajito. Um, bimbo bread. Bimbi, I said. I don't know what bimbo bread is. I can imagine. But I, I, did I say bimbo? I'm sure I said bimbi. Owen, you're winding me up, I think. VW camper vans are called Paul de Forma here in Portugal, as they resemble the loaf of bread. You just do not get this information anywhere else. Um, that is fantastic, and I totally get it. And wouldn't that sell well, um, a Paul de Forma, that he had icing on it to make it look even more like a camper van? Maybe not. Maybe that, that would be a real um, <laughs> challenge to the Portuguese consciousness in a way we shouldn't go into right now. So I'm thinking Ana Rita Vieira is telling me that, yes, I'm pronouncing Figueira de Foge in the correct way. I'm going to go with that anyway. Um, and cassette, Cassetta uh, is is the, the name of that bread. Tell us more, Joe. We need to know more. I, I, I had a feeling this would happen, that as soon as we started talking about bread, there would be some controversy and it might run and run. Um, staff of life. Uh, coffee is Bika, not Biko. Okay, thank you, Anna. Awesome. This is exactly the sort of tuition I need, and I'm hoping others here are benefiting from it too. This cultural exchange that is now occurring this morning. Thank you, Anna. Thank you for tuning in. Lovely to have your company and your council. Uh, trains, make sure you sit in the right seat too. Not too much of a big deal on the regional trains, well, on my journey on the line that goes from Aveiro to Coimbra, but you're right. My goodness, if you sit on the wrong seat on the old alpha pendula i think you might be find yourself in some trouble but have you ever tried to find your seat on the alpha pendula um, i mean half the journey's gone and you're still looking for the right seat a lot of other people are in that condition too i think that might be my seat you're trying to say that in portuguese hoping that it's a foreigner you're talking to who might speak some english no no i think you'll find this is my seat no you should be on the other side in fact you should be in a different carriage the numbering portuguese people tell us how do you figure out the numbering on the intercity trains because it's really stressful. Uh, thanks, Carl Munson. I uh, thank you for that, Joe. Thanks, Carl Munson. Yeah, forget the Foge. Let's go with that. Uh, power cassette is a baguette. Bicos are a light roll with a knob on each end. That one we know we've seen that one and pointed and laughed at it in the supermarket. Hence the Bico or Beak. Yes, Pete. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, so power cassette is a baguette. Bicos are a light roll with a knob on each end. Yes, okay. I've seen those. And they are, they're the lovely ones, aren't they? You know, buy them by the kilo um, in the bakery, in the padaria, and um, take it home and, and clutch to your belly and your chest the warm bread and the aroma of it. One of those Portuguese moments, right? Thank you for that, Pete. Very educational. Special Agent Little here, Gary Austin. We talked about bread at your request, Gary. Is this helping or is it making everything much more complicated than it needs to be? Little seeded baguette is fab with fresh cheese. Yes, that sounds like a lovely combo. Uh, I'm at Areng for some holidays and passed by Al Viazara. Uh, there we go. Connections being made. Uh, love Areng, love Al Viazara, love them both. Uh, Anna, thank you for checking in while you're on holiday and making us part of your holiday um, plans. My experience of trains when I used to fly back regularly, this is to the UK, was you had to choose a time. However, you can change your time uh, once with no charge. Yes, I've done that. I've done that and found that to be okay. But um, I just was a bit shocked the other night. I thought I'd be ahead of the curve, book me ticket, and uh, even on a regional train, specify the time. Interesting. Uh, top place, uh, top place is that little or orang or Alphazara? <laughs> Probably all three. Uh, for you, Joe. Um, time has marched on. Uh, we'll go into some deeper detail about this uh, fella. It's a wine. F I wonder, you know how um, inanimate objects. Oh, no. Okay. Car isn't an inanimate. No, it's not a human object. 
<laughs> but then should humans be called objects? Anyway, what I'm trying to get at is, um, is a w wine referred to as a him or a her? What do you do in your house? Will I be drinking this as a him or a her uh, on Thursday night with my wine club buddies? More about that then in the coming days uh, and in the wine club um, community group on Facebook. Uh, so I'll leave it there now that we talked a little bit about bread and just chucked, <laughs> thrown a match on, on, on the fuel, basically, of the bread debate. Um, I was going to put up the... Um, the address, uh, web address of my blog as well, wasn't I? So there you go, uh, coffee.com forward slash Carl Munson. Yes, I think it's good to leave it there for now. Bread, wine, and mushrooms this morning. And uh, we will return to the great bread debate. Uh, I need to head north uh, to Anadia also. You do, give us a shout, and we will share a bread roll and a coffee, A uh, the Bico you mentioned, or Rafino, uh, Anna, if you're in the area, give us a shout. Everyone needs a Pete a Wilton Davis in their group. I always l learn something new when he's online. Same here, Frank. L love the bloke. Um, our unofficial ambassador of Castaneda de Pera and more generally central Portugal. He is an absolute um, a font of wisdom. So thank you, Pete, for being here. Thanks, uh, Frank, for pointing that out. And uh, a final set of emoticons. Um <laughs> <laughs> Final seven months from Anna, Anna Rita, um, who also says, let's share a beaker, not a beaker. Yeah, that'll look a bit odd when it us sharing a bread roll, actually, to be fair. So we'll share a beaker instead. Uh, thank you, Anna. Thanks, everyone, this morning. Great to have your company. Take care. Bye for now. And we'll see you tomorrow. Uh, this evening on Good Evening Portugal is the news hour, uh, where we look at some Portuguese news and discuss it and you can phone into the studio or like you've done all done and you've all been very good with this this morning as you can comment in the comments as well or give us a call uh 913-590-303 portugal country code we'll be looking at some heavy duty portuguese news tonight and discussing it i think it's got to be rui pinto um you know we've got to uh, uh, Julian Assange on trial in the UK at the moment, and Rui Pinto, uh, a, a similar, um, I was going to call him a leaker, that's not the right thing to call him, is it? But, you know, whistleblower uh, and arguably doing something quite amazing uh, for society. So hero or hacker, we could talk about that tonight on the Good Evening Portugal. Uh, Open-minded expat phone-in and chat show tonight. Okay, take care, bye for now, have a great day. Uh, teja, teja.